Well, John Law arrived in Paris and he met uh, some uh, nobility and then who he was introduced to the king, Louis XV, Louis XV. Uh, and um, uh, Louis XV had uh, some trouble with his budget, uh, you know, as every king. And um, so uh, John Law convinced him to, to use uh, the paper money uh, somehow uh, uh, in exchange uh, that the king gives, gives him the exclusivity on Mississippi, and which was another company uh, uh, John Law set up and he introduced uh, on the French uh, market, if I may say that. So it was two, f two, two stories going on parallel. Uh, first of all, John Law, uh, who was made Ministry uh, of Economy of the, of the King, and uh, the King gave him all the, uh, all the power uh, and all the control over the French finances. So he was holding everything. And at one point, uh, John Law uh, asked the King to sign a law forbidding the French to use any gold coin and silver coin. And, uh, and specifically, uh, with, the with first with an exemption for the uh, for the church, for the uh, the priests and cardinals and everything, and then he he forbade also to them to use uh, 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 silver and and gold, and so this led to a kind of mini revolution in Paris once the the Mississippi companies uh, exploded, and of course that all the the French uh, th this new money paper money just exploded as well. So it was, uh, it was a real drama for the French people. They discovered, it was the first time in history they discovered the, uh, the money as, uh, on paper. And they discovered that it, at one point or another it will be, uh, it's worthless. So that's the, we may say that it's a, the, the great revolution, the first revolution for the French people, paper money. Central banking was already there. It was there since, since Louis XI, so uh, it was nothing new. What was new here is that John Law uh, uh, was able to forbid people to use their coins, you know, their wealth, gold coins and silver coins and uh, s uh, gold statues and the bil gold billions. Mm -hmm. So uh, they were not able to use it anymore. That was the whole point. Uh, so, because he was printing money, uh, you know, uh, as much as he can. So, uh, even for the king and for himself. And one point, he mixed up his own interest, and John Law's interests were higher than uh, the king's or the French people's interest. So, this whole thing just led to the explosion. There's a trick in this. Uh, the assignat. Uh, uh, which is, for the f in the English term, uh, it's, the, it's a verb to ascribe, okay? And to ascribe to something. So the, 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 the new f revolutionary government, they had this problem, money problem as usual, and they needed money fast, you know, to, to keep their revolutionary going, you know, the new government. Uh, if not, they, their own government will collapse, you know? So. The Talleyrand had this idea, but that was a political and mostly ideological uh, idea, which is off with their heads. Okay, so uh, uh, they decided to seize to seize all the Vatican properties, because for the French, uh, for this new French uh, government, uh, it was very important to kill uh, God. Okay, French people killed God in in 1789. This is, and we we can still see it today. Um, in the French politic uh, movement, modern m m movement. Uh, at that time, the point, it was revolutionary also, think about it. They just decided to take, uh, to take uh, the Pope's property in France. You know, lands, cattle, uh, 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 buildings, everything. And they said, they, they said okay, we're going to, s to sell that to the French people. You will be, you will be able to buy it. But to buy it, you will need to buy some uh, paper, which is called assignat, because it was ascribed to a church property, or to, a, uh, let's say, a, a some paintings w which were uh, hanging on the walls of the churches, or beautiful statues of the Virgin, or some apostles, whatever. So it was a piece of art. So all this have been, s uh, they decided to sold it to the French people uh, during one or two years. And, uh, but to get the money, they, they sold the paper to get the money immediately. 
because they cannot wait one or two years to to rassembler pour rassembler tout l'argent to to get the all the money. So that was the idea behind the assigna, and uh, uh, the uh, thing that uh, that the French government even gave an interest on it for the first year. So, so it was uh, it, it was very well thought because it was the perfect mix of political ideology and economy. You know, it's the the point is you know we kill God. You know, God doesn't exist. Uh, we're going to seize all the po property and we're going to give it to the French people. So it was marvelous. It was a kind of socialism, uh, you know. Uh, it was the, the birth of socialism. It was the birth of what Lenin will do, you know, uh, and the communists will do like uh, 200 uh, year, years after. Uh, people uh, have digged holes and they put their, their, their gold and money and all valuable properties in, uh, in, uh, in gold and silver. Uh, in the garden, so and they said we're we not going to use it un until the the economy will be uh, will be safe and sound. So the the French government didn't have any money. Uh, so then cities started to organize themselves, uh, issuing like uh, trust money, l'argent de la confiance. So it was again, it was like paper uh, issued by uh, the, the cities th themselves or little coins. Uh, made from uh, zinc or nickel, but uh, with some uh, inscription on, on it. So the, the, they tried to for one year, but it didn't work uh, because uh, the butcher didn't want to sell the the meat to the French people uh, for uh, worthless paper. So they asked uh, gold coins, but the, there is a law forbidding using gold coins. So th it was uh, it was a kind of Kafkaian. Uh, if I may say, <laughs> so it was a very bizarre situation. Le Directoire, which was a transitional political before just Na Napoleon, you know, they, they decided to get rid of all this. They burned, they destroyed everything which was printing the paper money, and they, they, they came back to the uh, silver and gold coins, uh, and also some paper, but ju just for, you know, big, big amounts. And uh, N Napoleon, uh, with his wars, you know, made France extremely rich. So the gold and silver were just flowing in, and uh, that was uh, it, it. It gave actually to the whole Europe a kind of stability, monetary stability, uh, until the First World War, uh, until 1914, uh, August, uh, it, where French, the French government discovered that they didn't have enough money to pay to the soldiers and officers and to buy ammunition and uh, uh, weapons. So they, 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 uh, um, they, start, they stopped to pay uh, the, sold the army with gold coins and uh, they started again with paper money. Th that, that, that's very, very interesting uh, because you see this stability lasted until the First World War. That, that's fascinating. And the only reason they got back to paper money is they didn't have enough money to uh, make war. So they used the quantitative easing to pay the soldiers and for weapons and uh, tanks and everything. Uh, and for four years that were, they, they did that. No, no, pro no problem. Think that today some gold coins of the uh, L'Union Latine, this is how we call it in French, uh, you, you, you can still buy them and they are they, they are worth, they are really, they are uh, the price in gold. Uh, they are still there. I mean, you don't have the assignats not, not there anymore, but the gold coins are still here. And the, the, the gold was flowing from one country uh, to another, uh, between Greece, France, uh, and uh, um, uh, Espagne and everything. Th that was absolutely amazing. It was a, a really stability. But uh, uh, as James said it, you know, that's very annoying for the government because they cannot print. Uh, money, uh, gold, sorry, gold and silver out of thin air. So it's always, uh, when a government decides to go to war, they need money. And if they can, pr if they can print paper, it's a hundred times easier. The background was, um, as usual, it was mostly cultural. Uh, it says, uh, Latin says it all. It's, it says that everything which, uh, we, uh, if we have la Latin origins, you know, like uh, it, uh, Italy, France, Spain, uh, etc. So all, all, all these countries, you know, the, 
uh, they should be uh, together because the, basically they have the same language, even if there are there, there are differences. So that's why they, they wanted. That was actually it's a v it was a very good idea because it was backed with gold coins, so it was easier for everybody. It was very easy, uh, even if with with a gold coin uh, you will be able to buy like let's say uh, two suites in in uh, one suite in uh, in Paris, and you were able to buy three. In, in Athens, it was not the issue. It was the gold coin which was the, the, the interesting point in it. First of all, because uh, Charles, Charles de Gaulle was watching uh, the Americans doing their Vietnam War. And uh, he saw, he was a military, you know, he saw what is the price of every bullet, of uh, every cannon, of every airplane and everything. And, and m mostly the salary of all the soldiers up there, you know. So he know that this is extremely expensive, you know. And there is no nothing in Vietnam uh, to take, you know, except rice. <laughs> so uh, it was a no no nonsense war, basically. So uh, Charles de Gaulle understood perfectly uh, that the only way uh, th that f first, first the Americans were already bankrupt because they printed more money, more dollars, than they had gold in Fort Knox. He, he saw that, of course. And uh, he got some C CIA uh, uh, paper, you, you know, that, um, uh, f for instance, it was very, very important for the CIA uh, to have the price of gold, you know, very, very low, you know, for the interest of the United States. So, Charles de Gaulle said in a very famous press conference uh, in front of all the journalists that uh, the Americans can do anything they want because they print money out of thin air, basically. So, and this is why in, it was in 66 or 67, I don't remember, but he decided, because he was able to, uh, Brenton Woods, uh, to send back all the dollars we had in France. So they, they put it in a boat, they sent it back to New York, and he asked the American government to uh, give, give back to the French government the equivalent of gold billions. And they did it. They didn't have the choice. The Americans filled the French boats with gold billions. And uh, uh, they were flown back, uh, well, not flown, but uh, by boat, back to Paris. And then the CIA got orders to, uh, to, to do the work to forbid every other country to change their dollars into gold, into gold billions because they didn't have enough. Th that's the interesting point. And it, it was an outrage. Uh, it was an outrage for the Americans, what Charles de Gaulle did. And as you can see it, you know, we get some revolution, <laughs> mini revolution then. And uh, the CIA was very active in Paris at the time to, to, you know, to, to get the, the gold out uh, because uh, uh, he was an, uh, annoying. Uh, f for the American power, economic power. And l look what the, f the successor of, uh, of uh, Charles de Gaulle did, Pompidou. They, uh, they got immediately a law on the 3rd of January, okay? Uh, 3rd of January, mean it means that there is nobody in. Everybody's in vacation still, okay? So nobody saw this law coming. Uh, uh, the law was that the French government was not able to borrow uh, to with the French people at zero uh, percent, but instead they, uh, the, f the uh, La Banque de France, uh, should borrow from foreign banks or French banks, whatever, but mostly foreign banks. And look what happened, uh, w w what is the situation today? Uh, today the whole Europe is just bankrupt. It's exactly the amount of uh, the, the interest uh, um, the, it's exactly the amount of the debt of each country. So uh, the, the, that's why the goal wanted to uh, to go back to the gold standard. He saw it. He saw it coming, and uh, Jacques was uh, wa one of his uh, best advisor. He wanted to go back to the gold standard. He 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 said it during this pre famous uh, press conference that the gold standard is the ultimate. Uh, 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 economical system because gold is a neutral uh, judge of, uh, of the exchange of wealth.
It's extremely simple. This has have to do with the election of François Mitterrand uh, in, uh, in 1981. Uh, th th it was the first time a so socialist government uh, was elected and everybody was convinced that the, the government is going to collapse uh, the, the, you know, six months after. It didn't. But uh, what uh, Mitterrand did uh, was uh, uh, to f n not to forbid to the French people to buy gold because before Mitterrand, you know, every uh, uh, every gold seller in uh, à côté de la Bourse, Rue Vivienne, will tell you before Mitterrand we were selling gold to ev all the French people always, Th and after Mitterrand came in, you know, suddenly. Uh, the, uh, all the French media stopped to talk about gold and the price of gold and everything and the price of silver. So as the media uh, observed a blackout for almost uh, seven years, you know, they just forget it about it. Because at the media, they replace it by uh, live from the, uh, f from the French Wall Street, for la bourse, you know, le CAC 40. Uh, every day at uh, one o'clock, uh, one 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 o'clock and fifteen minutes, uh, on the French TV, you had a live from La Bourse. Uh, you know, explaining to French people that they gain, they will have more money, uh, that they, their money is more sound in the shares instead of gold. This is what they have done for for seven years, and again for seven years because uh, Mitterrand got another mandate, S and that's why gold disappeared from the media scene. It's, it's not that the French are less or more interested. You know, every French family has his Napoleons. Y you know, we, we still give to, uh, if you get your diploma or whatever, you know, uh, French, t fin, some, um, uh, you know, la tante, the old uh, or aunt is, is giving the Napoleon because this is more sound. I, I think we, we will go back to the historical uh, ratio to gold, uh, gold and silver, uh, which is, uh, let's say 14 you know 14 coins silver coins to one gold coin well basically uh, considering what you have s what we have seen s since these three years uh, uh, with with silver price um, I think uh, I, th I think it's a, a very good idea right now to have like 40 or 50 percent uh, in in silver and the, the rest in gold I think the anyway silver will, will go higher because it, it, we will find again the same ratio, like 14 or 15. So, and f today we're far from it. The, the history of, of the first depression, uh, what happened in 1929, if you study that th this five years period, and there's one guy who perfectly knows everything about that, is Ben Bernanke, because he gets his diploma, uh, his uh, PhD in economics on, on the depression. And what happened at that time? Which, which share were perfectly safe? It was mining sh uh, shares and uh, commodities shares, but mostly mining. So everything has to do with, with gold and silver and, uh, you know, it's safe, basically. So you can, it's, it's nonsense to drop, uh, as James said it, uh, to, to drop shares of commodities. You can keep them, but, uh, you know, to, to have today some uh, uh, insurance stuff or, or banking shares or everything, it just... Uh, it's very risky, very, very risky.